the sky is the limit because uh, Temasek has ambition. They have the, res I mean, the funds, the capital to invest. We want to make sure that we find the right opportunities at the right place. But uh, the ambition is there. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of the EW Sessions. I'm really delighted today to be joined by an old friend who we've uh, we've met in various different parts of the world, but is now based in Singapore. Uh, Jean-Francois Quentin has, uh, has worked for a number of the big international exhibition organizers around the world and is the relatively newly appointed CEO of a relatively new business, Constella, which has brought together two of the big names in the exhibitions and events industry in Singapore. So Jean-Francois, welcome. And uh, maybe you could uh, start off by just telling us what is Constella and what's Constella today and what's your hope as the new CEO that Constella might look like in, say, two to three years time? Hello, uh, Paul. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me. Uh... Uh, as you say, we are all friends, and uh, it's very nice to uh, to be uh, uh, interviewed uh, today. Then uh, Constella uh, is the uh, merger of two businesses, Singex and Sphere Exhibits. Um, and the objective of Constella is uh, to enter, I would say, uh, in the top league. I think the uh, ambition is uh, from our shareholder is very high. And uh, therefore, I think by combining first uh, our businesses in Singapore, uh, we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, be stronger here and then develop further in Southeast Asia and in Asia. Then our ambition, I would say, is, uh, is big. And uh, this is one of the reasons uh, I've decided to uh, join this project, which is uh, going to be uh, very entrepreneurial. Uh, and we need to move fast and uh, with agility. It, it, it sounds very exciting. Now, where in the world do you expect Constella will be focusing its activities? It's primarily a, a, a Singapore-based business at the moment, but I think if your ambitions are to be met, you're obviously going to have to look perhaps to other parts of the world as well. So, so where do you think the business will be developing? I think the uh, uh, um, uh, Constella is already present in five countries and we want to in, in southeast asia and asia malaysia indonesia singapore a bit in china and uh, india and our ambition is to be uh, much stronger in southeast asia and in asia uh, which is where we are geographically then i think you need to be strong in your geography before you expand it doesn't mean that uh, if there were an opportunity to expand that we wouldn't, we wouldn't look at it, but uh, I'm going to uh, most likely uh, put focus and resources in uh, Southeast Asia and Asia to look at opportunities. Having said that, I think we also have, uh, as part of Singapore, uh, let's say, uh, platform, uh, we, we want to be the reference partner in the future for Southeast Asia. And what does it mean? It means that uh, we, uh, we already have developed some partnerships with our, uh, you know, some partners like Dutch Messer and, uh, and other uh, organizers, and we want to strengthen this. We want to be the reference partner in the future, developing a joint venture uh, on, I would say, on an equal basis, meaning 50-50, and therefore uh, bringing some uh, intelligence, know-how, technology together so that we can address the markets. And uh, then it's, it's you know, one of our ambitions. Obviously, I think we are uh, very strong in Singapore and we are going to develop as well a C-level events because I think we are ideally placed to uh, support the development of C-level events in Singapore. What it sort of makes sense that that would be the sort of business that would, would be very well suited to Singapore. What what difference would that make? I mean, what sort of skills and resources would you need to add into the business to make it uh, more, more more effective at, at attracting and running those sorts of C-level events you're talking about? Yeah, we, we are already running some of these events, but I think we, we want to get more organized to attract and also to run these events. Uh, 
We want to develop events in partnership. Again, I'm saying that whether they are C-level or B-level or, 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 or business to business events. We need, I think, to go one step further in terms of content management and content creation. Uh, and we would probably recruit uh, uh, in this segment. And then we need to uh, also uh, you know, have a high level uh, organization to, uh, to welcome, to serve uh, the C-level summit. Then uh, we will just reinforce our team. We, we already have a team in place, but I think we'll reinforce the team, our team, mostly in, uh, certainly in, uh, in, in uh, skill set for managing sea level events and content creation mm, interesting your your business is is a combination at the moment of venue management some exhibition some other sort of events activity um which components of that do you think will be the most important going forward i mean will we see more venue focused activity from from Constella, will it be purely exhibitions? You've got B2C exhibitions coming in with the uh, the sphere exhibit side of the business. So which, which sort of segments of the whole business events world do you think will be of most interest to the company going forward? Okay. Um, we have historically uh, uh, been the venue management manager of Singapore Expo. Um, in partnership with the uh, uh, Singapore, Singapore Tourism Board. And we have been managing the venue and developing the venue and the offer since 1999. And then these are pillar of, uh, I would say, Singex, ex Singex of Constellar venue today will remain. And we will uh, continue to serve our customers and to serve the market with the venue. But in the future, our Constella strategy will be more Constella markets, which will be serving uh, the B2B and, and C-level and B2C space. And our, our, our development will be in the, in the event uh, generation uh, and then uh, in, in organic growth in the event and trade show sector. We, we are also contemplating, I think, as part of the, our uh, uh, strategy, uh, to also look at marketplaces, digital marketplaces uh, uh, that we could uh, uh, potentially acquire and then uh, potentially also use these marketplaces to develop events in the region. But Can you we... know, to go from, uh, let's say, to go from a uh, uh, $90 million, $80 million if, uh, uh, company pre COVID to uh, more than $200 million, you need to multiply by three. And therefore, it means that we will have to go through uh, external growth and inorganic growth in the future. Excellent. Well, uh, we'll, we'll come back in a minute to that uh, ambitious target of tripling the size of the business. But just before we talk a bit about that, the um, the uh, you, you, you touched briefly uh, on the on the digital side of things and it's obviously been very much on everybody's agenda over the last 18 months uh, because they haven't been able to do anything else because in most parts of the world event activity is, has not been taking place but what is your wh where do you sit on this spectrum of people who are you know some event organizers kind of hope that the world just goes back to how it was before and we don't have to worry too much about this complicated digital stuff whereas Others believe that the business is now quite transformed and completely different. I mean, where do you sit on that continuum? I mean, is, is, do you think we go back to where we were or do we really sort of pick up the ball with this digital stuff and, and drive it forward? No, I, you know, I think the, the answer for me is obvious. I think we need to be at the forefront of the digital era. I think we have been late in this uh, in the trade show industry and i think we now need to to go forward as then my view is that we cannot go back for i mean we cannot step forward we need to go forward and going forward means that any offer that we will propose will be uh, with a, a strong digital component then you know uh, the best example i can give is uh, the singapore fintech festival which we organ which we organize with mass which is a monetary authority in singapore we have been able last year to fully digitalize this event. Uh, 
it was a round the world event, 24 hours during five days. And with I've been able to uh, organize 2000 conferences in five days with 50,000 attendees and 1500 exhibitors. Then if we have been able to do it because somehow we didn't have the choice, then the question we have uh, strategically is how can we amplify this and how can we get a, a bigger share of wallet of our customers when we recoup and when we can do the physical event. And my view on this is that uh, we have been able to somehow get 35% of what we were making physically. And uh, if we go back to uh, 100 plus 35, that's 135. And we should be able maybe to make 120 and then propose a different uh, event during the year. And then it's not going to be any more uh, you know, a, a five day event is going to be a five day event, but with many events that we will propose during the year and therefore increasing the revenue in our market. Yeah. You're, you're the first CEO I've spoken to who's been brave enough to actually put a number on the growth opportunity that comes from the digital to, uh, so we'll see, but it's, it's, it, I mean, it assumes events come back to 100%, obviously, but um, uh, w one thing in, I have in mind is that one of the reasons that a number of the former sort of multi-channel business media companies ended up focusing in, in almost primarily onto events, including one of your former employers who had a, had a mantra of events first, was that the margins in events were fantastic. Um, some of the investments that we need to make and some of the costs that will be incurred with these digital projects potentially make it more challenging perhaps to get back to those levels of margins. Do you think that's, that's going to be a problem for both either your company or others in the industry as we restart? Because some of this will require quite a lot of investment. I think it's a very good question. I think our, our, our industry has been juicy, I would say, for many years. And yep. I think milk, I think we, we need now to to think probably differently. I think with my, uh, I'm going to talk with my Constella hat. Uh, we have, a, and I think this is the, also why I think it's very good to, to be part of this project, is that we have a long-term view on things. Then you need to do the right things for your business and for your markets. And therefore, I think we have to do investment and we, if we want you know, to have a different value proposition, you need to do investment. And unlike maybe the, the big players willing very often to have a, a short return on investment, then we can look at it by saying, how are we, are we going to serve better our communities? And therefore uh, we might take a hit the first year, but longer term, I think we will recoup uh, largely this, uh, this money invested. Then uh, I think the uh, digitalization and uh, the transformation we are going through is absolutely fundamental for our business, and I think we can uh, also, uh, you know, uh, grab some uh, some money from our uh, community in the future because they are ready to pay as well. If you if you have the right offer, you know, I think the question is is often to get the right offer for your customers. Then I'm quite absolutely. confident in this. Well, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And that's very exciting. Final question. You're, I mean, you come into this company with quite big ambitions. You've already mentioned the objectives of a business that within three years is three times bigger than, is it three years? Anyway, three times bigger than, uh, um, than, than it was before. Um, there will need to be some quite big steps in order to get there. I mean, one, one question I would have is, you know, you are now backed by substantial resources of, of Temasek and SPH, two, two major Singapore companies. From time to time, one of the sort of the top 20 companies in the industry worldwide comes into the market, particularly those ones that are owned by private equity. Um, would you see Constella as a player when the bidding for one of these big companies come? I mean, is that an attractive option? Is that something you would like to see uh, you, you competing with all of the other usual suspects who will be there the next time one of these big companies comes onto the market? Yeah, the, uh, the answer is yes. We, uh, we want to position ourselves 
uh, as part of the uh, you know uh, potential bidders if we can speak about bids but uh, we want to position and i think the ambition of temasek is uh, to really uh, enter uh, strongly in this market and constellar is obviously uh, 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 going to be their uh, their vehicle to uh, do uh, this investment and therefore uh, if there's a good opportunity at the right price uh, then uh, we would obviously uh, turn to temasek and, uh, and and seek obviously uh, a funding to uh, to get into uh, into the picture then uh, somehow i think uh, uh, the sky is the limit because uh, temasek has ambition they have the res i mean the funds the capital to invest we want to make sure that we find the right opportunities at the right place but uh, the ambition is there and obviously uh, if we want to go from, uh, I would say, within five years, uh, from where we are to uh, enter the top 20, then obviously that can go through uh, some major acquisitions. It, it could be in one step, you know, depending who is in the market. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Jean-Francois Cantor, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I think you have taken on one of the most interesting and exciting jobs in the industry at the moment, to be honest, to, to take on a a business with the ambition that you've described to us and with a brief which you describe as the sky is the limit is uh, is is really perhaps one of those sort of once in a lifetime career opportunities so we will be following very closely and with great interest how you do but uh, for now thank you so much for your time today it's really been a great pleasure chatting with you thank you very much paul for giving me this opportunity